And for question way eight, we have to draw the load line characteristics and determine the kissing point of the diode in part A. And then for part B, we need to find the slope of the load line and what does it represent. Okay. Now, to apply this load line analysis, basically we need to convert this entire circuit up there to a circuit that looks like this. And then I will say that here is the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Here is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. Now, because this is just a series, sometimes, I mean, it, it, it doesn't say that R3 is a load, right? It's just like a circuit. So we can apply like the load line, but R3 here, it, it's not implied that it's a load. So we could also include this resistor R3 here with the Thevenin resistance. And I think that's actually the, the answer that you will have on, on the answer sheet with the Thevenin resistance considering the, the load or R3 uh, as, a, as just like a resistor. So I'm basically modifying the circuit as if R3 was like um, before uh, the diode, but it doesn't change the, the behavior for the load analysis, right? So, uh, in this case here, how do we calculate the Thevenin resistance? So, it's just the 600 ohms in parallel with 400 ohms plus the 2 ohms, the 200 ohms, right? So, if we look at the circuit seen from these terminals there, so it's just RTH equals to 400 in parallel with 600 divided by 400 plus 600 plus 200 ohms that we have for our tree. So this gives us a Thevenin resistance that is 440 ohm. Okay. Now the Thevenin voltage is just a voltage divider because if we look at the circuit as an open circuit on the terminals of R3 and the ground, then it would be just a the voltage across the 400 ohms, right? So it's going to be those 3.3 volts times 400 divided by 400 plus 600. And this gives us 1.32 volts, okay? So now that we have those values, 440 here, and 1.32 here. We are allowed to, I mean, we can apply the load line um, characteristic to your load line analysis in this plot here. Okay, and how do we do that? So, first, the value of VD for the load line. So, for ID equals to zero. VD must be equals or the voltage across the diode must be the voltage VTH, right? So let me draw this condition so you understand what I'm saying. So for no current flowing through the diode, suppose the diode is here, the voltage VD across the diode, if the current, so this is 440, this is 1.32 volts. If there's no current for the condition where ID is equals to zero, the voltage across the diode, VD here, is equals to 1.32, right? So it's around this region here. Now, if the diode is conducting or the voltage across the diode is zero, right, then this would be like a short circuit here and the current would be just the voltage 1.32 divided by 440 and this is equals to 3 milliamps so for a condition where so let me say condition where ID equals to zero 
VD is equals to 1.32 volts. And for a condition where VD is equals to zero or the, the diode is conducting, ID is equals to three milliamps. So those are the two points that we need to have to to, to draw the, the load line. So three milliamps are up there. And then the load line. So let me see if I can use So I use just a line that crosses this way up to 1.32. So this is the load line, okay? This red line is the load line. The key send point is the interception between the exponential curve of the IV curve of the diode and the load line. So that's the operating point or the key send point for the diode. Now if we zoom in here, that basically gives us a voltage that's around 0.8.8 in .8 .8 a current that is 1 milliampere here, right? So the key send point, the operating point, is IQ equals to 1 milliampere and VQ equals to 0 0.88 volts okay so we are done for part A now find the slope of the load line for the slope of the load line if we if we analyze this circuit here again the circuit that we have here right and let's say that or let me redraw the circuit so for part B let me redraw here and then let's say the diode here it has some um, built-in uh, voltage right so this is VTH this is RTH and this is VD okay so we know that minus VTH plus ID which is the current flowing through the diode this is the series path here times RTH plus VD that's equals to zero so if you rearrange this equation in terms of ID equals to minus VD divided by RTH plus VTH divided by RTH that's the equation that we have now if we Analyze this equation. We we can see that we can write this as like a general form of a, of a line, right? A straight line. So it's I equals to minus A or like A times X plus B. Now I Y here is so let me use colors. So I D is Y. The coefficient A is minus 1 over RTH and B is just this constant term here that it's VTH divided by RTH right so the slope of a straight line we know that it is the coefficient a so the slope of this line the load line it's minus 1 over RTH so what does that implies it implies that if we change the RTH or if we change the load suppose here we have we are changing R3 as the load we are going to affect this equation of RTH by increasing or decreasing this value of RTH right and if we change that, or if we change R2 or R1, we are going to change the slope of the load line, okay? So if this RTH, it goes uh, to zero, we are basically one over uh, zero, it's going to be something that tends to infinite, so the slope of this line will basically uh, increase, right? 
So if we have, as if we didn't have any resistance here to control the current that is flowing through the diode. So this thing here would tend to be more perpendicular to the VD axis, right? Now, if this is so, this is RTH. So if we are reducing RTH, if we are increasing RTH, we reduce the, the amount of current that would be allowed to flow through the diode and eventually the diode would turn off. So this one here would be like if we keep increasing RTH. So we basically control this curve here. So if we decrease RTH, we go there. If we decrease RTH, we go here. And then you see that we are basically, so if this curve would go up there, we are basically changing the key ascent point or the operating point of the diode. Okay, so that's the that's the representation. What does it represent? It basically controls the slope, and it gives us like different operating points of the of the diode.